In this Realize Displays training video, we're going to be going through playlists. We'll talk about how to add slides, edit them, copy, remove them, set the durations for full screen and regular videos, set your page transitions, preview even just a single playlist, as well as link playlists from other dashboards that are like live connections into other departments. So we have a lot to talk about, so let's just get right into it. Your playlists are down here uh, in the middle of the dashboard area, and your pages are up here. So it's pretty simple. All you'll need to do is just take your slides and drag and drop them into the playlist. Now these ones, if you were paying attention to our other videos, have shared backgrounds. So it usually helps to keep those together so you have some continuity between your crawlers and other information. So it looks like a template and just keep adding them all in. If you remember from the other videos, we went ahead and created all of these pages. Let's go to the next page and we'll find our menu board and then finally the study abroad slide. Now, as I open up the playlist, as soon as you drop one in here, you'll notice the film strip expands. And then as you continue to add more slides, more film strips will appear. So you can continue to fill this up as much as you like. There's no real limit on how many you can have. The settings down here will help you to create an effective playlist. First off, you can preview. We'll get to that in just a second. You can edit the playback durations. Uh, this is important because when you click this button, every slide defaults to a 15 second playback duration which means it will show on your display for 15 seconds before moving on to the next slide so if you would like to give more attention to certain slides simply increase the slides duration so that people can see this, the slide a little bit longer maybe there's more text on the display or maybe you just want to have an important message hang on there or for this, or on the contrary, if you were just going to show maybe a logo and just reveal a logo, maybe you only need to show that for five seconds before, before moving on. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, so when we get to the preview section, is set all these for five seconds so that we can see a faster preview. When we eventually see how all of our slides came together from our previous videos. Now, uh, before we get to that, we're going to click Save. And there's something important regarding durations that we should talk about. You can have full screen videos. And if you remember inside of the editing of a video itself, either YouTube, Vimeo, or a video you uploaded from a file, you can set whether you would like the video to start from the beginning or continue to play. But that does not cover when do you stop playing the video. So you would do that down here inside of your playlist because in the durations, if I have a full screen video, this is where I will set when the video will stop. Because if I have this video set to continue to play, or I mean start from the beginning, every time the page is shown, the duration of this entire page will tell me how long this page will hold on the screen and play that video for. So let's say that this video is around 60 seconds. I would need to set the duration of the entire page for 60 seconds to ensure that the full video is seen. So let's go ahead and we will save this. Now, so all of our durations for all of our slides are set. The next thing that's extremely important for you to note down is how to remove a slide. If I click on it, there is no delete button for any of these slides. So there is actually something much, much easier. Don't forget, all you need to do is grab your slide and throw it out. Grab the slide and throw it out. And then grab one and throw it back in. As simple as that. You can throw them out as quickly as you could ever press delete. Now you'll notice when I did press or click on these slides, there are a couple things that do pop up. So if I click right on this slide here, I can either edit, which will jump me immediately into the editor. So if I have a change that I see right in the playlist, I can jump right to the slide and quickly make that edit within the slide itself. The other option is a gear, which we're going to cover in the next video, which is how to schedule your slides. 
So for now, let's go ahead and let's just press the preview button. Well, actually, let's talk about the page transitions first before we press our preview button. Page transitions are essentially just a transition between each of these individual pages. You remember that you can set uh, you can set the transitions of each element within the page itself, but when the page itself turns, that's where this comes in. So typically it is set to fade, and often if you get really good at your element transitions within each page, I typically will leave this as fade, as to not make the uh, screen too flashy and to confuse our audience. But for the sake of showing you what it can do, it can slide, it can do a 3D cube, or we can just set it as random so that we can see a random selection for each page turn. And then finally, you may want to know what your overall loop is or the total duration of the playlist. That is 42 seconds right now from start to finish. So keep in mind your audience dwell time when you are setting your playlists. Because if your audience will typically stay for five minutes, you may want to have a playlist that's a little longer than 42 seconds. Maybe set it to around two and a half minutes or about half of what your dwell time is so that people can see a little repetition. Okay, now let's press that preview button and let's see the slides that we put together in the previous videos. Click preview and then you can click anywhere right in the screen. And that will make it full screen. There might be just a little bit of cutoff in the bottom of this. That is just the recording of this video, by the way. Okay, so there's our cube transition, and now we are right into a full screen video. There's our fade transition. Here's a video background with events coming up on the right side from our web page. A nice transition into our complete social platform live information and what's happening today with our event calendar and then our menu items that will pop up and the first slide we created which if you've caught on yellowstone is not really a great study abroad place because it is also within the u.s so now we are back to our beginning and we can hit the escape button which will show us our x that we can x out Great, now that we've seen what is going on inside the playlist, let's take a look at what the playlist itself can do. If we click right on the playlist, you can edit, which will open up that film strip, make a complete duplicate copy of the playlist, which has all the exact slides and all of the schedules in it. And then you can press the delete button, which is to delete, obviously, that playlist. Or if you'd like to rename it, Go ahead and do it like so. Now, the next thing that we're going to go through is extremely important, is probably one of the most powerful tools within our software. Now, that is the ability when you add a playlist, not only can you click this add button and choose a completely blank playlist where you can drop new slides, but you'll notice that there is sometimes a from other dashboard button here. And the reason I say sometimes is because it depends on your user access level if you see this button or not. Now, you'll if you see this button, you will also see a drop down at the top of your screen. This means you have access to other dashboards or other sub accounts or also known as departments within the software. If I click this drop down, I can travel between each of these different dashboards. Now we've always been working inside the main dashboard, but one of the nice things about this platform is when you click the add button and select from other dashboard, which means I can access a different dashboard inside the software, I can then see the playlists within those other dashboards. If I select a playlist, there is a button that says link to the selected playlist. And now you'll see somewhat of a lower opacity playlist with a little arrow on it. And what that actually is, is a direct link right to the playlist sitting inside the dashboard. Now I can actually click right on it. I can do all the same things that I would with a regular uh, playlist and copy and rename them. I can even click the edit button and I can see which slides are playing, if they have schedules, 
and also the total playback duration. Now, the one thing I cannot do is touch or manipulate any page within this linked playlist. That's because this playlist is technically under the control of department number two, where it came from. I can also preview it if I want to see how the content plays. Now, the great thing about this is when you share information between departments, it can save you a lot of time. Let's say you, if you are a university and you would like to have an athletics playlist linked from your athletic account, anytime athletics updates this playlist, it will then update automatically inside of your account. So to show you how this will work, I can travel to department number two where that playlist lives. Now let's just pretend and let's add a sample page. And then let's drop the sample page into playlist number two's playlist. That's all I need to do. If I travel back to my main dashboard and open up the link playlist, I will then see all three slides. So anytime that that department two adds information into their playlist, it will then update our total loop and information and I can use and schedule this as if I own it and it will simply link to their content. So you may be asking, what if I don't have this dropdown or what if I don't have access to other dashboards? Well, actually that's perfectly okay. There is admins within your overall software that will have access to the other departments um, if you have an enterprise account. And an enterprise account allows you to have all of these, allows your actual customer account to have each access to different and as many departments as you like. So an admin user inside of your enterprise account can travel into your dashboard and can also add information on your behalf. So all you would need to do is talk to one of your admin users as long as you have an enterprise account, let's say a university or a larger institution, and, a, and an admin user can do this copy and link process for you so that you can then see information from the other departments. Now the last thing that we're going to go through today, if you've noticed when I open up a playlist, there is on this bottom part of our film strip an optional foreground page. So all in total, if you have watched all of our training videos so far, you know that you can set a background page that works as a template behind any other page. Then you also have the content that sits on top of it, kind of like the middle of the sandwich. This foreground page acts then as the very top layer, obviously a full page that sits on top of everything else in this entire playlist. So a little bit more than the top of the sandwich, it's like the top of every sandwich inside of this playlist. Now to give you an example of how this works and a note of caution when using this, it can be very tedious or it can be very there can be very few times when you actually may need to use this page. So I created a crawler foreground, and all this is is just a crawler that goes across the bottom. And if I drop this as a foreground page, you'll notice that there are no changes to any of these pages. But when I preview this, the crawler will sit on top of everything. And that's why this can essentially be a little bit dangerous, because if you're editing slides and dropping them into a playlist that has a foreground on it, you don't know the exact positioning of that content as you are creating the slide. So just be careful with this, and I would say use it sparingly unless you are very comfortable with creating and designing. When we press our preview, We will now see that purple crawler across the bottom sitting on top of every single slide that we've created. And it is, and actually in those templates, it's covering up the other crawler. Okay, let's press escape so we can see our window again, and then press the escape button. 
Just a couple other notes now about this foreground page. The interesting thing that you can do with a linked playlist, when I open up the linked playlist, you cannot actually add any of your own slides unless you manage to do it like I have here. But what will actually happen is any slides, if you do happen to drop them in like this, will not actually play next to any of this content. So don't try and add anything into the film strip of a linked playlist because it's just not going to work anyways. But the one thing that will work is the optional foreground page. So if I wanted to, I could drop this crawler and I could have it play across all of my linked content. So let's preview that. And now these slides came from a completely different department, yet I can show this crawler across the bottom of all of them. Now, the last thing that should be noted is when I click on the foreground image, whether it's in a linked playlist or whether it's in just a regular playlist, I only see the edit button. If I click on any of the regular slides, you'll see I have this gear, which opens up our scheduling panel. So as we get to the next video for scheduling, just keep in mind you cannot actually schedule a foreground slide. You can only jump right into the edit if I want to make a change. And then once again, you can just throw out the foreground image, the same as any other ones, to remove it. That concludes our first video on how to operate and get the most out of your playlists. Tune in for the next video on scheduling inside of our playlist for the different slides. And good luck until then. We'll talk to you soon.